Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you how to solve linear inequalities. Okay, now for some reason linear inequalities have some weird rules you must follow. It is different a little bit from solving just linear equations. So I know you know how to solve linear equations, but now there's some things you have to be careful um, about when you're solving linear inequalities. You can't assume that the same rules you use for linear equations will apply to linear inequalities. No. So, let's get into the video. So my strategy in this video is to take one question at a time and use it to explain some of the rules you need to know. So, look at this. If this was an equation, you know what you would do? You can just solve it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's solve this. What would you do? We're trying to isolate x. So we do the same strategy. It's just like a linear equation. It's just that in an equation, you get only one answer. In inequalities, you get more than one answer. You expect it to get a range of values to satisfy the inequality. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides. Okay. And what that gives me is, see, if I do this, I get negative x is greater than 2. Mm. But remember, whenever you solve an equation, you're looking for x. You're not looking for negative x. Okay? You're looking for x. You're not looking for negative x. So there are two ways you can actually solve any equation that has a negative sign attached to the variable. Okay? Do not conclude that this is your answer. It's not your answer. You need to get x. So one way I can do that is to move the x to this side and bring the 2 to this side. And you see, when this goes here, it becomes, if I don't switch the sign, it becomes positive x, and this 2 becomes negative 2. Okay? So, and because the arrow is facing x, okay, always remember that. You have to keep it. If negative 2 is greater than x, then x is less than negative 2. So I can write that as my answer, x is less than negative 2. That is one way you can solve this. But it's not the most beautiful way. Okay? Now, the most beautiful way is to take this expression, so watch this, what I'm going to do is write negative x is greater than 2, and I'm going to divide both sides, or multiply both sides, by negative 1. Okay? If I multiply this by negative 1, multiply this by negative 1, what happens is, this becomes x, and this becomes negative 2. However, whenever you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you must switch the sign. So this is the same thing as this. Now you see how I moved it to this side, then I switched it again. That might confuse some people. So the best strategy is divide both sides by negative 1, by whatever is the coefficient here, and then that's it. Whenever you use a negative number to divide both sides or multiply both sides in inequalities, you must switch the sign. So we don't do that in equations because there's nothing to switch. So that's the first rule I just showed you. Now, how do you present this answer in um, inequalities? There are many ways you'll be re required to present your answer. One way is to use what you call set notation. Okay, and for set notation, well, this is just part of the set notation presentation. But the actual way to present this is to write this wiggly sign and say x is the set of, so this is a long line of all x less than negative 2 and then you close it up. That is what you call set notation. And what this means is any number less than negative 2 will satisfy this inequality. Any number less than negative 2 will satisfy this inequality. Remember? So if we're talking about the number line, how would you show this on the number line? That's another way. So we have this first way. Now let's go to the number line. If this was the number line, you're going to mark negative 2 um, will be with the circle empty circle, okay, and this is negative 2, but this side will be shaded because every number to the left of negative 2 will satisfy this inequality. That's one way to present your answer. The third way to present your answer is called interval notation. And interval notation tells you, okay, where did we start? If we want to write this as a group of numbers, where will we start? Well, you're going to start from negative infinity, okay? So your interval notation will be like this, negative infinity. And where will it end? It will end just, or it starts just after negative infinity, whatever that is. And then it's going to end just before you get to negative 2. 
That's it. So these are the three ways your answers may be presented, and this is the solution for the first one. Let's take the second one. I may not have to explain anything special here since I already explained a lot in the first one. Let's do it. So for the second one, we're just going to solve it, okay, like an equation, while taking note of all the rules that govern inequalities. So this is going to be 2 minus um, 4x minus 4 is greater than 8. Okay, um, I'm going to leave this here and move these numbers to the other side. So that gives me negative 4x is greater than 8 plus 4 minus 2. And so I have negative 4x is greater than 12 minus 2 gives me 10. So now I'm about to divide by negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. So remember, I have to switch this sign as soon as I do that. If I divide both sides by negative 4, I'm going to have x left here, and this is going to be 10 over negative 4. Okay? But this sign is going to switch to the other one. So I have x is less than negative 5 over 2. And you see, that's the end of all the calculations. Okay? Let me just present my answers my answer, okay? Well, there are many answers to this because it could be any number less than negative 5 over 2. So using set builder notation, I said set notation is set builder notation. Let me write it. Set builder notation, okay? The set builder notation is actually your answer. You just need to make it fancier by saying there's a wiggly wiggly and then there's an x. There's a long line here. So you say that this is the set of x such that x is less than negative 5 over 2, and then you close it. So this is the symbol for set. So you read it this way. It is the set of x such that x is less than negative 5 over 2. That's set builder notation. If you want to use the number line to show your answer, all you have to do is, because it's strictly less than, um, this is going to be like this, and then it goes with this way. Okay, and this is negative 5 over 2. If you want to use interval notation, well, it starts from here. Where is this point? That's negative infinity, and it stops just before you get to negative 5 over 2. So interval notation will be like this, negative infinity to just before negative 5 over 2. Okay? So remember, this. the reason why we use the curved um, brackets or parentheses is because this number is not part of the answer. This number also is not a part of the answer. Okay? But they're just after, this is just before, and this is just um, after the solution because it's not a part of it. So that's the solution to this one. Let's go to number three. So this is number three. And if you want to freak out some people, just throw a fraction into a problem and they're going to freak out. Well, there's no freaking out here because it's very easy to get rid of any fraction in an inequality or, or even in an equation. Just look at all the terms that are fractions. This is a fraction, this is a fraction. What's the denominator? Well, it's two. So just take that number two which is the LCM in this case, which is your, what you always look for, the LCM. Use the LCM to multiply every single term in the equation or the inequality, and you'll be done with fractions. So let's do that. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. I'm going to write this so you see what I do. This is going to be 2 multiplied by 3 over 2x plus 2 multiplied by 5. Every single term, do that. 2 multiplied by 5 over 2x is less than 2 multiplied by 4x minus 2 multiplied by 3 into x plus 1, okay? I didn't have to write it that way, but I wanted you to see all the terms in the inequality. I could have just done it mentally and multiplied. Okay, now if we multiply this 2 by this 2, this cancels this out. Remember to cancel out and don't multiply the top, okay? Because you're just multiplying, okay? So if you, this cancels this out and you're left with 3x, this becomes 10. This, this two will cancel this out. Remember, the purpose of the multiplication is to get rid of the denominator. So that's important. Multi divide th this two by this two. You're going to be left with 5x. It's less than 2 times this gives us 8x. Well, 2 times 3 is going to be minus 6. Well, we can do this, x plus 1. Okay. So now, uh, we still need to open this up. And at this stage, I might collect terms together here as I go on. So this is going to be... Um, 3x minus 5x will give me negative 2x plus 10 is less than 8x minus 6x minus 6. Okay, I'm going to bring all the x's. So one thing I want to advise when you're solving inequalities, take all the variables to the left-hand side. It just makes a lot of sense, okay? Don't try to say, oh, I'm going to solve it like I do an equation, because for an equation, it doesn't matter what side x is. For an inequality, it is always best to have the variables on the left-hand side. 
So I'm gonna move all the variables to the left hand side. Well again, this is gonna give me, what is eight x minus six x? That's two x. Ah, so see, I'm gonna have negative two x um, plus 10 is less than, this is two x minus six. Okay, take this x here. I'm gonna have negative four x ultimately is less than negative six minus 10. Okay, so I have negative four x is less than, what would this be? Negative 16. Mm, interesting. So I'm gonna divide both sides now by negative four. Remember, when you divide by negative four, you must switch the sign when you divide by a negative number. So I'm left with x and this becomes greater than negative 16 divided by negative four is positive four. Okay, and that's my answer. So if I use the set builder notation, I'm gonna have the set of x such that x is greater than four. That's one way to present my answer. On the number line, my answer is gonna look like this. This is gonna be four, and it's gonna be an empty circle which goes all the way to the right. And if I wanna use interval notation, well, it starts just after four, which is gonna be like this, and then it ends at infinity. Let's go to number four. Now, this is what you call a compound inequality. So all compound inequalities are presented this way. There is a term here on the left. There's an inequality sign. There's an expression or a number in the middle. And there's another inequality sign. And then you have another number or um, expression. Now, don't bother yourself trying to uh, do anything weird. Just solve it. Try to isolate x in the middle. And that's the fastest way. Try to isolate x. So what's the first thing to get rid of in the middle? The 7. So we're going to subtract 7 from here, subtract seven from here, subtract seven from here, okay? And that's gonna be, if we take seven away, I wanna do it this way, okay? What you're gonna have in the next line will be negative three is less than three x, and it's less than or equal to 21. So the next thing you wanna tell yourself is, I wanna isolate x, so I'm gonna divide every term by three. So if you divide this by three, Divide this by three, divide this by three, you'll end up with negative one is less than x, and it's less than or equal to seven. And that's it. This is your set builder notation. This is your answer. Everything is perfect. We're done. Okay, so I can do this and say my solution is wiggly curve, you have x, you have this line, you close the wiggly curve, you've solved your um, inequality. How do you show that on a number line? Well, there are two numbers we can see, negative 1 and 7, so you can do this. Write negative 1, write 7. Okay, I'm going to take this out. Because this is strictly less than, I'm not going to shade it, because this is strictly less than or equal to, not strictly, it's less than or equal to, I'm going to shade this one. And because x is between negative 1 and this, I just need to join these two. This is the easiest, isn't it? So let's do the interval notation for this. Where are we starting from? We're starting from just after negative one. So for interval notation, because this is not included, we're using the curve and it's gonna be negative one. It keeps going and it ends at seven. Uh-oh. Strictly at seven, but seven is included. This is the interval notation for the solution. So this looked as if it was gonna be complicated. What is all this? But it looks like the prettiest and the easiest of all of them. Okay, let's go to the last one where we're gonna be dealing with LCM and of a fraction and it doesn't look that complicated. Let's try it. This is that final question that has a fraction but the denominators are not the same so you're looking for the least common multiple. We know it's gonna be 10. So I'm gonna multiply this by 10, multiply this by 10, okay? So this is gonna be 10 times one over two into x plus two is greater than 10 times one over five into x plus seven. So this two is gonna divide this and you have five into x plus two is greater than, this divides this, you have two into x plus seven. So if we multiply out, we're gonna have five x plus 10 is greater than two x plus, what would that be? Uh, 14. So we can subtract two x from both sides, we're gonna have three x is greater than, subtract 10 from both sides, we're gonna have four. So x is greater than four over three. That's it.
Now we just need to show this on the number line, write it in set. So this is a set builder notation. I don't want to rewrite it a second time. So well, let's just write it wiggly x slash x is greater than four thirds wiggly closed. Okay, next thing, number line tells you the key number is four over three. Go here. It's an empty circle because this is strictly greater than and because if number is greater than this, we have to go to the right. That's what the number line tells us. That's it. And set builder notation is done. Number line is done. What other thing is missing? Ah, interval notation. Well, we're starting from here, not here, just after this. So because we're starting from just after this, we're going to write 4 over 3 with the curve. And where are we going to stop? Well, we're going to stop just before infinity. And that's it. If you learned something in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please be subscribed. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.